Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. What Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire well-beings to watching every single Shonen Jump anime in existence till the end of time, till death do one of us in. Who goes first? Who knows? <laughs> but we'll find out in the future. Find out in... 50 years on Shonen Archive. <laughs> yeah, 50 years. Good luck. If any one of us are still alive in 50 years, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> That's probably fair. Uh, either because I'll get taken down due to health issues and you'll be taken down due to someone on Twitter will eventually find you. <laughs> either one of those ways, will, the many ways they could go down. Yeah, I live in the American South. That'll be enough at some point. Yeah, at some point you're just running the statistics. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually someone will get me. And uh, our main series that we go through is Gintama, and the other one is Koriko. And today we're going to be talking about Gintama, which is episodes 210, 211, 212, 213, 214, which is the Kabukicho for Deva's arc. And then 215, which is the aftermath of what happens after all that. Yeah, it's kind of its own. Little. It's its own thing, but it, it is considered an aftermath one, and uh, it had to be included in because if it was separated and was uh, put next to all the silly ones, it would have likely <laughs> been a detriment to everything. So yeah, for due that diligence, tends to happen. it tends to happen. So for the better part of it, I said it's better just to stick this out at the end here, and that'll be a good way to kind of wrap it up. But yeah, that's what we're we'll going through. But before we do that, I should mention because it was brought up last time. Um, by someone in the comments, which caused me to go into, like, a search for it. Uh, someone mentioned in episode 209, the uh, episode pre previous beforehand, that the joke that they do where they do 3, 2, 1 piece, uh, and then they play originally in there, it's the, um, I think it's the Dragon Ball parody song. Uh, apparently there was, someone mentioned in the comments, there's actually an, al an alternate version where they actually just play We Are from One Piece. Oh, yeah, I saw you tweet about that. Yes, and that caused me to go into a <laughs> no fucking way. No way that they just did that. And then, and I tried to look up and try and figure out what happened. And I eventually I did find it. It turns out that they're... Originally, I, the person who commented it assumed that it was censored on Crunchyroll. It wasn't censored on Crunchyroll. There's actually two different versions of episode 209. The broadcast version and then the DVD version. For whatever reason, the DVD version has the, I, I assume, their original idea for the joke, which is putting the we are in there, and it's uh, really funny, and they actually did do it. It was, uh, uh, I assume that they can't do it on the TV version because of licensing reasons, <laughs> even though, probably. yeah, they are owned by the same people. There's probably, like, a lot of weird things to go back to that they can't just straight might up. be, like, if the band made it only for One Piece or whatever, you have to get, like, permission for to use it elsewhere. I don't know. Yeah, some, something silly like that. But either way, uh, they were able to put it on the DVD version, so apparently on the DVD they were like, okay, that's fine. Only on TV broadcast it might have been something different. But I was able to find it. I was able to track it down. I think the reason why a lot of people know about it is that uh, the, way, the way I was eventually able to find it, because you can't find it on Crunchyroll, I tried to find it on YouTube, never showed up, but if you go to the illegal parts of the anime community, you can find it there, and that's the reason why I think a decent amount of people know that it's a We Are joke, <laughs> is because they are looking at the DVD version, which is likely the highest quality of Gintama that they are using, so I thought it was funny enough to make a mention of like, oh yeah, this is something that happened, and in general, what a weird thing for there to be a difference over. <laughs> Pretty funny. <laughs> So there you go, just to bring it up at the start. Thanks to that guy for bringing it up to my attention, because I immediately went into, like, holy shit, that's amazing, and I went looking for it, and I found it. And it's uh, really funny, really well done. So, let's get right into this arc, Zen, so we can start talking about it. Episode 210, a lawless town tends to attract a bunch of woo-hooey folk. Go ahead and start us off, Zen. So we're in a bar, and there's a girl in there, and she's like, hey, who's the strongest in the Kabuki district, slash Kabukicho, whatever you want to say it. Uh, and the guy gives her the rundown of like, oh, you know, it's the four, the four devs control the, the territory, but if you want the strongest single individual person, it's probably this monster that stays with the Tose. He's talking about Gintoki. Um, and so the girl goes to find gintoki and he like 
uh, beats her very quickly, sort of. It's, like, very obviously that she's not really doing anything. She's just kind of immediately like, oh, my God, you're so strong. I give up. Um, and he keep, she keeps being like, hey, we could, uh, we could totally take over Japan, you and me. We could just, you know, rule the gangs. And Gintoki's like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be a gang leader. I don't want anything to do with organized crime. And he says he doesn't want to be Darth Vader. Yeah. Uh, and um, she's like, Oh yeah, uh, my gang got crushed by the the evil Jirocho, who's one of the uh, one of the members of the Devas. He's one of the he's the the, the Yakuza guy. Yeah. He has like the Yakuza section of the Kabukicha area. Um. And so they try, they start trying to like rehabilitate her so that she's not a gangster anymore. So they change her name from um, Piraco to Biraco Man. And every time she exhibits gangster tendencies, an extra Bira is added to her name <laughs> to the point where they're calling her like Bira 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 Biraco Man. Yep. Um, eventually, there's some actual like Yakuza dudes who show up and they try to do the whole like, oh my god. You bumped me, and now I'm hurt. How are you going to make this right? Uh, scam. And then, so Gintoki's like, that's it. I'm going to deal with this. And then he goes and does the exact same scam. And he's like, ah, patting your shoulder <laughs> broke all the bones in my body. Ah, he's like laying on the ground. And then Kagura, I think, tries to do it on the fish store owner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to make it seem like they did it, but it's the fish owner is the one that touches her, and she just flings yeah, forward. And she leaps into the, all the like stands and stuff, and she's like, "Ah, oh, all my bones." Um. Eventually, it doesn't work. Um, and one of the guys goes to hit uh, Paraco, and Gintoki catches the punch and slams him into the wall. And he keeps being like, "I don't want to fight you, idiots!" While like hitting them. Mm -hmm. This one guy's like running up and he's like, we don't have to solve this with violence while he like back kicks the shit out of the guy. Uh, and so then he realizes like, oh shit, I just hit Yakuza guys. Um, and so they go back to Atose's place later. Or, uh, everyone except for Gintoki and the girl do because the girl, or Kagura is the one who produces it. It's a trash can full of cement. And she's like, we got to do what we got to do. We got to kill these guys. I think we gotta kill these guys. Hide the bodies. Yeah. Um, and so uh, Shimpachi and Kagura are also Kagura's talking in like uh, what I assume is like a parody of a Yakuza person. Yep. She's talking with like a mafia accent the whole time. She is. Um, and so her and Shimpachi are running away while Gintoki and uh, Par what's that, fuck? Paraka. Paraka are hiding. And uh, they get they chased. The, they're the... in the trash can with the cement, which is now hardened into actual cement. Um, we cut over to the four devas, and they're holding a meeting, talking about how well, we need to like um, get rid of Jirocho. And then he's there, and he's like, "Oh, is that what we're doing? We're all plotting to take me out." Um, they kind of start fighting a little bit, but then they stop afterward, and they kind of make this agreement that like there will be no violence at all. Or else, whoever breaks that rule, the other three armies will will get them. Um, and then this guy is like, "Oh, you know, I could just kill you all right now." And one of the assassins for the the only one whose name I don't remember, uh, the like peacock woman, yeah, uh, jumps she jumps out and he's like, Ka Ka "Kata, uh, Kata, yeah, yeah," because she's um, like a Kujaku. She's named the, the peacock, but Kata works. Just Kata will yeah. be fun. Uh, and so he, she's like, uh, oh no, he's just kidding. It's fine. And the guy's like, no, 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 this guy has the right idea. He could tell that I was serious, but he didn't notice that I already took him out and his arm just like flies off. Mm -hmm. Um, so eventually they all get things under control because Saigo is like, we don't need to be, we don't need to be doing this. Um, so that's when they make the peace fire deal. And then it cuts back to Gintoki and Parako, who have been found by the Yakuza in their cement trash can. Uh, and they're about to get thrown into the ocean. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's where it ends. Uh, this one, I thought it was a very good start for the arc. Like most arc starts, they're good starters, and then they never end up being the best one of the series. <laughs> Just kind of the way it goes. <laughs> but they do the job that needs to be done which is introducing and setting up the main uh, plot points and the characters as well. And I thought they did it pretty good with that. 
Uh, I liked a lot of the Yakuza ga- gags because I'm a big fan of the Yakuza series, and this just straight up reminded. He's like, no, this is this is straight up just like actual dialogue from a Yakuza game, <laughs> down to like the pretending to be injured and faking that, and then um, I really liked when they were uh, f- faking to be injured, and like Gintoki like taps him on the shoulder, and then that's when he starts faking the injury, and he's like, oh god, that tap of the shoulder, it really took me out, all my bones are broken, so like, you tap me, <laughs> I was like, that's not how this is supposed to work out, uh, and yeah, Kagura going flying was really funny, um, I like Parako's the the bit where she was talking about like I want to rain um, down into the Kabuki district nothing but flowers and then when she's like talking was like oh yeah my gang they actually just retired and went to go become like flower dudes there there wasn't actually anything related to that I actually just want to start something else like she's the way she's explaining everything they thought that like I have to stop you from getting revenge. And she goes like, "Oh no, no, no! It's, it's nothing like that. You're you're getting things all completely wrong." And then Kitoki gets angry because he's like, "This entire time, I've been trying to subtly make you stop <laughs> get on your revenge quest, and you don't even want it." Yeah, you don't even have a revenge quest. And she's like, "Yeah, no, 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 no. We're all good." <laughs> about that. Yep, all that's good. Uh, I like the bit when um, she keeps calling him An- Anaki as well, which is something they do a lot in um, Yakuza terms because it's a it's Big Brother, but like in terms of endearment, that's how you kind of do it. For it's like when you look up to someone, Anaki is what you use. Yeah, it's like it's like bro. Yeah, it it's kind of like bro. That's what uh, in Yu Gi Oh GX, remember that's what uh, Sho calls Judai. Yes, exactly, Anaki, and that's the kind of way of showing it. It's a different way of saying brother. It's like bro. Um, and, uh, that was cool. I also like when they do the bit where they start, like, walking around, and she starts saying, like, oh, yeah, this is a real nice, uh, place you got here. You gonna pay us any protection money? He's like, what are you gonna stop? Stop trying to extort money from everyone. We're not that kind of gang. He's like, they need to pay us for protection. He's like, they're all trying to hide from us. (laughs) Stop doing anything. Um... Also, when they were trying to get her to stop her Yakuza ways, and they give her, like, sweets for the first time... And she returns the cake that Shimpachi had. She's like, I think a cockroach went into this. I think you're going to have to refund me. It's like, it's like what What are you doing here? <laughs> this is terrible. This seems like you're just doing this because it was me. And she basically just confirms, yeah, it, it's just because it's you. And then both K- Kentucky and Kagura is like, oh, no, no, she's right. She should have done that. Yeah, what, what, Kagura, what Kagura says something that's really funny right there. I don't remember what it was. She's like, no self-respecting young lady would take that or something like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because he tries to be cute, which is the thing that kills it so funny. Because he's like, hey, hey Paraco, you got to eat it or else I'll eat it. Haha. And he takes a bite of it and he like goes like that. Like, is it pretending? And then she immediately goes to return it <laughs> rather than to eat off of whatever he had, which is pretty good. Um... But yeah, a lot of, like, good silly gags here at the beginning, like, when Kagura just immediately embraces that they're now a Yakuza family, as opposed to them just being the odd, yeah, like... Yeah, she has, like, no problem with it at all. Yeah, she immediately starts shaking down people with her, starts doing the accent, is just, like, fully into it and all that. And in terms of that, I also really liked a lot of the stuff with uh, Jiracho as they were kind of uh, doing his stuff, like, that intro bit of his... Where the four de- uh, four devos are kind of talking about it, and I think I'm trying to remember when they first started hinting that he existed, because I'm almost positive it was almost over a hundred and fifty episodes ago, maybe close to a hundred episodes ago is when they first talked about the- there were four devos, and we saw that he was that we knew about the three of them, we knew about the um the peacock lady, we knew about uh, Sogo, we knew about um. Atose, obviously, but Atose. he was always in the in the in the background hiding. So it was kind of cool to finally be able to see him. Uh, even the one dude that's working under him was someone who worked under him directly, and we had seen him back in like episode fifty, I want to say. The dude who was like uh, trying to hide the comb over, the pretending to be bald. We met him like a long ass time ago, and he works directly under him. So it was like a long time finally meeting the dude that has just been hidden back in the streets for this entire time. Um, and he had a really cool intro, that shot of when he's, like, uh, saying, like, (laughs) cause he talks about, like, oh yeah, when you get, it sucks to get old, never get old, because now I can't control my, uh, uh, I can't control both my swords. He says, basically, I can't control when I piss anymore, and I also can't control when I use my sword. Um, and then he immediately just, like, uh, cuts that dude's arm off, and it's really cool, and it's also a really nice, well-done shot, and... 
god damn, is it really good to be in the 16x9 because a lot of these cool animations just look that much better when it's actually yeah, full it screen. Look a lot better. Oh, it does. It it looks amazing. Um, and besides that, I also really like when the four devils are talking about specifically Otose's gang and about how specifically, like, yeah, we may have dudes, but they stick to your own territory. Your dudes just run wild everywhere. And they actually have, like, this shot of all three of them where they're, like, talking about them. And it really kind of frames the Odd Jobs crew as, like, these dudes who are just, like, running around doing Otose's bidding, even though it doesn't really feel that way. But if you actually think about a lot of Gintama um, episodes, a lot of them are kind of framed where at some point Otose is talked to or talked about, and then she kind of guides them in a specific way. So it's kind of a good kind of way of them saying, like, no, this is how we kind of see them. They may be seen as someone who, like they literally work outside of your bar. They work on top of it. They are connected to you in some kind of way, and they're the reason they're you're the reason they're able to go and do all the crazy shit that they're able to do and stuff like that. So, really cool starting intro of it. Good way to get into it. How do you feel, Zen? That's how I feel. Yeah, it was good. It was funny. Uh, mm. I like the Baracko Man jokes. I thought they were good. Um, mm. I think my favorite joke is when. They're taking her around to, like, show her good stuff. Um, and they take her to, a, like, a fish stand, like, the salted fish stand. And both her and Kagura are looking at, like, the piece of fish, like, f- like fawning over it. Like, it's cute. Like, in a really girly <laughs> way. And Shinpachi's like, what are you you're just taking her places? You want to go? <laughs> uh, I thought that was funny. Um that is good. And yeah, seeing Jirocho for the first time was cool. He's he's a pretty cool guy. Yeah. It's kind of amazing how um a lot of what we know about him is that he was potentially just in mentioning he was one of the four devas and then just the ED is all we really ever saw of him and that was enough to be like I kind of can't wait to see this guy actually do something and then when he actually does something he's cool as shit. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> really cool. Um no, those were, oh, I also really did like that gag when they were putting the dude in the cement and they get found by the gang. Because it's a they conquer goes like we need to put him in cement. It goes like because we need to hide what we've done. And then they cut away and then the Yakuza goes like, hey, what's going on here? And then they just they, they just see the dude in the cement as they try and hide him. <laughs> and they just go, uh, and then they start run off. <laughs> like the, the fact that he was actually convinced to actually put in there, he's like, no, this is the only way. <laughs> this is the only way we're gonna hide from the Yakuza. <laughs> really funny uh let's go on to episode 211 which is called ghosts aren't the only one who run wild around graveyards go ahead zen uh so tarako reveals that she is jirocho's uh daughter and so her role is to actually like win him the war like she she only wanted him on uh, or wanted Gintoki on her side so that uh, he would join Jirocho later because she wanted the strongest guy on his side. Um, and he's like, that won't work because if you throw us in the water now, everyone will think you're the aggressors. You know, it won't uh, it won't work that way. And so Jirocho or uh, not Jirocho, uh, Parako stabs um, the guy with the face scar, and mm-hmm. she's like, okay, we'll just say that you killed our commander then and nobody will know the difference and then they'll all blame it on you um she throws him into the water and then gintoki rolls the trash can into the water to save him to go and get him uh and parako's like okay well that's why i wanted him because you know he's he's determined and he's unstoppable but he chose the other side so i'm just gonna abandon him now and leave it um they cut to uh the the fucking what are they called the devas mm-hmm. and they're like uh, so what makes you think that Atose would do that because they don't believe it they're like that's not true and then she's like well what if I tell you the sad backstory of of my father and Atose which is um, they were like childhood friends and then the they were competing over over Atose Atose with Atose's husband. Uh, like they were, they were all kind of like a trio, and they were all like fighting for Atosi's affection. And the husband won, whose name I don't also remember. Tatsu, Tatsugoro. Tatsugoro, yeah. Tatsugoro, yeah. He also uh, was, was like part of their little group. Um, 
then when Tatsugoro eventually won Atose over, they got into a fight. Uh, and so they, they say that Jirocho is the one that killed him. Mm-hmm. And then abandoned his family because he has residual feelings for Atose. Uh, Jirocho then cuts the wall open and, and like cuts her little ponytail off that people have been grabbing her by the whole time. Yep. Um, and he's like, I thought I told you to stop talking. Um, so Jirocho's like, you know what? I'm going to go kill Atose myself. That way, no one will, will intervene. Uh, or no, th- that way, uh, he's going to go like settle it. And then Saigo wants to intervene. And then the girl is like, uh, God, I don't remember her name. Kata. Kata, that's her name. Um, is like, Ooh. actually, we kidnapped your son, so you can't do anything. Like, you, you, you need to side with us or we'll kill your kid. Um, so then there's a phone call to Atose at the bar. And she's like, hey, why don't you all go out somewhere nice to eat? Like, why don't you leave? And then whenever um, Gintoki gets back, because that's who called me. It was Gintoki, and he said, everything's fine. I'm going to wait for him here. You all go out to dinner, and then I will meet you later when Gintoki gets back. So they leave, and like I think only Shimpachi is like, that seemed a little weird, but no one really pays any mind to it. Um, then we see that the the guy that was stabbed ends up bumping into Shimpachi because Gintoki did save him after all and like leaves him there. And then he's still covered in the concrete. Uh, and he ends up busting his way out as he's running, and he makes it back to Odd Jobs, and he finds a note that says that, uh, hey, I'm, I'm kicking you out. I'm tired of waiting for you to pay the rent. Get out and leave town. But Gintoki realizes what she's actually doing, which is basically sacrificing herself for them. So he is, like, sprinting all the way across the city to the point that he makes it to the graveyard where they first met, which is where her husband is buried. Uh, Jirocho appears there, and he's like, or she tells him, you know, hey, if you bury me next to my husband, like, there there could be worse things than to die next to him. Uh, by the time Gintoki gets there, we see that Atose is leaning up against the grave covered in blood. And then Jirocha says, you know, hey, you don't need to. You don't need to stay here. You've got nothing to protect anymore. She's already dead. Uh, in honor of her last wishes, I won't kill you if you get out right now. And then in the middle of him saying this, Gintoki spins around and cracks him in the face with his wooden sword. And they have a very cool fight uh, across the graveyard. Eventually, Jirocho does, in fact, win uh, the fight. And then Gintoki manages to crawl his way over to Atose and has a flashback of the promise where he promised uh, Atose's husband's spirit that he would protect her. Uh, while there, she's laying there and he's bleeding out in the rain, and then it ends. Yeah, that's a uh, the immediate run up for this one. Something else. Yeah, uh, this yeah, is yeah. a this is a really good ass episode, and this is also when I was really like, God damn, the sixteen by nine, so good. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was the first time that it's really visible how much nicer it looks is when Gintoki starts fighting uh, yeah, Jirocho. The, that, it's yeah, crazy. That moment where he's like flashing back to basically turning back into the monster that he was during the war when he was like like the like the flashing back the black and white back to when he was like a kid in the graveyards scrapping up bodies looking for stuff. That specific monster. It's the first time we've ever seen him like that in like at a long ass time <laughs> and it was sick uh all fights in the rain are immediately sick no matter what it's, i don't make the rules of this this is just true um the fight in the graveyard was amazing because especially when they're fighting normally and jirocha like puts down his sword because he's like oh yeah i won i broke your he he like broke his sword and he's like yeah we're good here we're done and then Kentucky fucking takes the sword that was broken his and then just fucking takes it and stabs him in the arm yeah the best part is when he he stabs him in the shoulder with the broken wooden sword and then he has the broken handle in his other hand and he rears back to stab him with that too before the guy stabs him through the arm to stop him from doing it yeah he's just like totally feral yeah 100 percent feral super well done Holy shit, the entire time I was like going, oh my god. I think I rewatched it at least two or three times. 
just because I was like going, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And then at this point, I was like putting stuff up on Twitter, but I think after this one, I kind of stopped because I was just watching everything unfold and in, in, in everything that was going down. But yeah, that, that fight was amazing. The confrontation was great. Um, a lot of the Atose stuff was uh, also great. Uh, she's a great backbone for a lot of the emotional stuff that happens in here. The note she leaves behind for Gintoki, which is just like, I'm sick of waiting for you to pay the rent, take your fools and scram, never come back to this town. Really good, just because the wording, even though it is in the same, similar to the Catherine episode that we talked about a little while ago, is that she has trouble kind of like giving people a happy send off when they're, when she's saying goodbye. Just because she knows that no matter what, life is about to get real hard, so it's a lot easier to kind of send them off on their ass so that they start at, like, a low point and then things don't seem as bad for when it goes off there. Um, it's a real good way of just showing off, like, yeah, this is something that Atose would, like, literally never say because of how often she's just always hounding him for the rent. Uh, really well done, the way that the thing falls down when she's talking to him about saying, like, yeah... My specific, I don't really have a gang, that, so don't bother them. They they just so happen to be, the members of my faction aren't a faction, they just so happen to be my family. So you shouldn't touch them, and shouldn't deal with them, because there's no one else in my faction but me. And then she gets got, and you see her in the graveyard, and you see Gintoki, and it's all really, really fucking well done. The conversation that they also have in the graveyard, it goes about, beyond a lot of things, it's really well done. Um, a lot of the the look back, which ends up becoming a lot of uh, importance, is the the vow that the promise that Gintoki made to Atose's husband, which is uh, Tatsugoro, which is apparently he he's named after the birthplace of where the real Atose came from, is what I'm understanding oh. is why he's named that. So yeah, that's why her husband's name is Tatsugoro, is because Atose was actually born in Tatsugoro or somewhere equivalent to that, close to that name of. So that's why they named her husband that way. Um, which is a cool little thing about that. I would never have picked that up until I was like, why is he called this? <laughs> uh, cause a lot of dudes in, uh, Gintoki, uh, Gintoki in Gintama are named after real places. So I kind of looked at, and I know Otose is based on a real person. So I looked that up. So there you go. Um, I also really like that beginning part when Gintoki just, when he realizes things are really bad and he like just tumps off the dude who's still bleeding to Shinpachi and he's running with cement still on him. <laughs> And then he's running so fast that the cement actually comes off as he's going on. Oof. Really well done. Really, really good episode. Really enjoyable. And yeah, I really liked it. How do you feel, Zen? Yeah, super good. Um, I, I After I had a minute to like process, I was like, there's no way Atos is actually dead. But when it <laughs> happened, I was like knocked out. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> geek, wait. Like, I, I had to take a minute. And then after after a minute, like when I, before I went to the next one, I was like, this is Gintama. They're walking this back. There's no way she's actually dead. Um, but in the moment and then like the fight afterward and then when it ends on Gintoki, just passed out in the rain. And then I think this is where the credits switch to mm. all of them standing in the rain, like looking sad. I was like, oh, my God, did they actually do it? Yeah, uh, yeah, you know what? You, it's a very good point because now the ED. Now, if you think back to the ED, they never really show Atose. They only show her in her young form. That's really god damn. That's just really well done. Holy shit! Yeah, it, it is really. Well, I was kind of the same way. I was kind of feeling. I was like, "There's no fucking way yeah. that she's actually." Eventually, I was like, "They're totally gonna." There, there's some gonna something. Some, something's there. gonna happen here. So, so yeah, they can't. There, they can't. There's no way that they're gonna. To actually kill her uh, but there was a solid few minutes there where i was just like no thoughts head empty like yeah. holy shit mm. <laughs> it, got, got. if this was a thing where it was like this is where the chapter left off and it was like a modern day you'd be like there's no fucking way there has to be a walk back of this you can't do this to me <laughs> yeah it is super well done and it is uh heartbreaking it is uh, fucking crazy why would you just fucking out of all the characters to get done dirty in this kind of way why would you ever do that to a tose <laughs> it's like the world yeah, of all people a tose is like man yeah it, it it's super well done and props on them for at any point just making you as similar to the idea of like what i have for what i say what makes good wrestling is a lot of the times in wrestling, you know when a situation is going to go a certain way, 
Just because, oh, it's kind of predictable. You know that certain things have to happen this way. But the best, the best form of it is able to make you forget that and just kind of live in the moment and just kind of enjoy what's going on and not make you really think about that until later. And then it happens and you go like, well, obviously, like, yeah, of course it had to go this way. But in the moment that you're experiencing it, you're just in the moment. You're living the moment and all that, like, especially now that we, like, have the internet and we, like, just... You know, the nature of a lot of watching shows, you're super analytical even when you're not trying to be. You just end up being that way. But if you can just, if it, if something can make you just forget that for a moment, that's when you know you're watching really good shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think another good example of this, spoilers for a different show, sort mm-hmm. of, because it's from like the 90s. Go good. Um, is Genkai in Yu Yu Hakusho. Mm-hmm. Because everyone points at that now as being like, well, that's dumb, and obviously you knew, blah, yada, yada. But, like, when it happens and you're watching it blind, you are, like, gone for a solid, like, 15, 20 minutes before your brain kicks in and you're like, yeah. okay, they'll probably bring her back. But, like, when she gets got, you're you're toasted for a bit, and that's exactly what happened to me here, too. Yeah. I was like, no fucking way yeah. that yeah. they just killed off a Tose. Yeah, I, I can I can definitely feel that. I can definitely see that comparison. It's a, it's a good one to make for sure. And funny enough, I remember being a kid and being like, nah, she's just gone. <laughs> because I was a child when I saw that. And I was just like, I can't believe they just <laughs> fucking killed that guy. <laughs> and I would have that same reaction if I was watching this as a child, going through it in the same way of Cartoon Network. When they got to this, I'd be like, oh my god, no way. There's just no, there's just no way of like... Um, in the moment, you're just so lost in it because you're so invested and they've made you invest in it. That's when you know they've got you real good. Is when they're able to do something like this. And it's just uh, super well done. <sighs> Let's continue talking about the goodness of what's to come. Because now we're going to go to episode 212, Chains of a Warrior. Which I believe they actually change did they change i want to say that it was like chains of the samurai later on but it might maybe it is chains of the warrior but we're gonna go it's, cha- it's chains of the warrior yeah okay chains of the warrior episode 212 go ahead zen so uh paraku's all proud that atose is dead and they're like oh you know she's talking to the peacock lady and they're having like a, a standoff sort of um and the peacock lady is like you know Tose might be gone, and you might have hated her because her dad, your dad, cared about her more than she cared about you, or that he cared about you. But even with her gone, he's still not going to look at you. He doesn't give a shit about you. Um, and that really pisses her off, and she leaves. Everyone is at the um, hospital, and Atose is in a hospital bed, uh, being taken care of by several doctors and such. Uh, everyone is there, and they've clearly been, like, up all night. Um, Catherine's face is, like, streaks with tears. Uh, Shinpachi has huge bags under his eyes, so does Kagura. And Shinpachi's like, Kagura, why don't you go back and sleep? And uh, Kagura's response is something like, um, I don't want to sleep and then wake up, and she's gone. Th- that fucking uh, hurts so much. Yeah, <laughs> that was rough. Yeah, that, w- that yeah. was really rough. That 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 was almost enough to make me go. I was like, P- please don't send me back to the, the times I forgot. <laughs> don't do this to me. <laughs> um, Psycho appears and he says, "Tomorrow we're tearing down the bar, and then the day after that we're gonna come after you if you're not gone. So you have to, until the day after tomorrow to get out of town." Um, Gintoki arrives and he says, "You know what? Um, I know they have your kid, but I'm done fighting." If we die here, uh, then Atose's sacrifice would be for nothing. So we're disbanding the odd jobs. Everybody get out of town. Uh, Catherine gets really pissed off and is like screaming in his face. And then he says, like, uh, what you're telling me to fight when I couldn't even beat the old man one on one? Like, I'm I'm out of here. I I'm I'm finished. Uh, and he leaves. And so uh, people around town are like, hey, you know, there's there's war brewing, and they they got a Tose. Like, this shit's getting serious. Uh, and as they're doing that, we kind of see the people around the district that have kind of 
bonded with Gintoki and the gang over time, like the old man and the firefighter woman who I completely forgot about it, until this episode. It, uh, this is like the ultimate like Scooby Doo two monsters unleashed. Like everyone is back. <laughs> like yeah, it's it's very Avengers Assemble esque moment here. Yeah. Um. And then. Uh, when everyone has left and Shinpachi, or, and then they're all outside the bar and they're like, you know what? Shinpachi's like, it's okay, because as long as we're alive, we can start again. But before he manages to get out his like pep talk, he starts to cry. Uh, and they all just kind of break down and start crying together. Then we cut back to Gintoki, and he's still in the hospital with Atose, and then the guy that uh, he saved it like kind of mocks the fact that she's dead, and he grabs him by the sword wound. And he's like, actually, I didn't save your life to be nice. I saved your life for information. <laughs> and uh, he's like, he says, like, I, I saved your life so you'd spill your guts. So let's get your guts out while he's yanking on his wound. Yep. Um, and then so the guy eventually tells him the story of Jirocho and Atose's kids and how Atose was sort of like a, a sister figure to him and would constantly, like, she was, like, on his side when everyone else had already abandoned him and written him off as, like, a troublemaker and a, a problem. Um, because Atose was, like, there to, to keep him from falling into shitty, like, gang behavior, he eventually became a, a vigilante, uh, who protected the town, like, illegally, and then that's when Tatsugoro arrived, who was a cop, and so they kind of clashed at first, because it was, like, a vigilante versus the law sort of thing, then eventually they became very good friends, uh, but they both ended up falling in love with... Uh, Atose, and then Tatsugoro did eventually uh, get with her. Then they were in battle, uh, some sort of battle. I, th I think it was in the the Amanto War. Yeah, it's the one before. Um, they, they said like the the joy, the, the the prior, the one before Gintoki's war. Yes, I guess. yeah, the one that would be before, yeah. or or maybe the start of that war and not the beginning of it. But it's definitely one. Um, we'll have to figure it out. Some of them probably a little bit, but no. But I think it is two different yeah. wars, but still under the same idea of fighting the Amanto, just in different kind of ways. Yeah. Um, he jumps in front of Jirocho, uh, Tatsugoro does, he takes a bullet and dies. Uh, so we find out that Paraka was wrong, uh, Jirocho did not kill him, he sacrificed himself to save Jirocho. Um, and so Jirocho kind of spiraled into depression, and he was like, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go give my everything to save this town that we always fought for together. Um. Kentucky's like, all right, I'm going to go take care of business. And then Atosi's like, please just leave. I don't want you to die. Uh, and he turns around and says, don't worry. I'm just paying the rent. And he goes to do his thing. Um, Piraco is like, hey, don't worry. You know, everything's taken care of now. And Jirocha's like, yeah, well, we'll see. All I know is Gintoki's not coming back. And then Piraco's like, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, uh, I, I think that the type of guy that he is, I think he will definitely show up here. Uh, to do something about what what happened, and then she says that you're both you're both chained to Atose and to this city by a promise to Tatsugoro, which is the the chains of the warrior because you're unwilling to break your promises. Um, Gintoki has experienced a ton of loss, but he accepts that he still is responsible. Like he's going to protect everything else. Whereas Jirocho said, I, I couldn't protect anything, so I'm giving up on everything. And that's why he left his wife and his daughter and all that stuff. Um, Kintoki takes up the old sword and whatever that other thing is, like the baton club. Yeah, I wish I remembered the name of it, but yeah, it's like a baton. It's, the, it, it's I, like I, a police baton sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like Melina Scythe from uh mortal Kombat, except for not pointy they're meant more for like stopping it's, yeah it's it's like, it's, it's, it's what swords. it's got a little hook on it to like block swords with it's what eagle uses from <laughs> uh street fighter alpha i think yeah but uh, he goes to take those and he wants to go and fight them and like protect the bar uh but then kagura and shimpachi show up and they're like you know this is not who you are like you you protect us and we're gonna protect you just like always and then Catherine and Tama, the robot maid, also show up, and they're like, you know, you always do everything for us, and we trust you implicitly, but it's time for you to trust us too, and we're going to do this all together. Um, so they end up making a promise to Tatsugoro to protect everything that he loved, and then uh, the group appears to tear down the bar in the morning, 
And when they open the door, Gintoki's inside, and he's like, yeah, the place is booked. I feel like drinking alone. Get out. Uh, and then some of them walk in, and he, like, punches them all through the doorway. And he walks out, and he says that, you know, anyone that tries to touch the bar, I'm going to stop them right here. Uh, and then Kagura, uh, Shimpachi, Tama, and uh, or no, just Tama yep. up here. And they're like, the Otose family is going to, we're going to pay our respects right here. And we're going to take you all out. Yeah, and that's where the episode ends. It is a jute, and I remember. I should remember because that's what that's why he's called Jute Fighter in um, Yu Gi Oh. There's a Yu Gi Oh card called oh, Jute he Fighter. Has the yeah, he has the little. Yeah, that's what they are. Uh, the, so they're a Jute. <laughs> good to know uh, going forward. Uh, this is another really good episode. This one uh, hit in a lot of different ways for me because. You want to talk about the 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 bit with Kagura when she's talking about like she didn't want to she it's like the the specific fear of having when you know someone is kind of in critical care and it's the same thing that you kind of go through as a person if you ever hopefully you don't have to go through that but as someone who has gone through that there's the feeling of just not wanting to be away from them because what if you're not there and it is the most it is. Even me talking about, I don't want to talk about it very much, so I'm not gonna say anything more. But it was a hard. Yeah, it's a terrible feeling. It's a horrible it's a feeling. feeling, and oh, the the way that everyone was in there, just like the pure, especially after the Catherine the Focus episode, the way that she was just like there, never closing her eyes, like she's crying, but also she's just tired. Like that's how far the tear ducts have just run out for her. That she's just like not seeing anything. It's really rough, like, the conversation that they have where Catherine just loses it at Gintoki when it seems like he's not going to be trying to fight back, and he says, like, like the odd drops is basically done, because we're done, and this is it, this is the end of it, um, is really rough, uh, especially when the part where Shinpachi starts, like, to yell back at him, and this is where I first noticed, it's like, this is really... It's, it feels weird to hear Shinpachi yell, and it's not jokes. It actually did this, like, opposite feeling of, like... Because usually when I hear Shinpachi yelling, I assume, like, oh, he's just, like, making... You know, he's it's for fun. It's for funny times. He's here to tell someone because they're goofy. But this one, he's actually legitimately angry at Gintoki, and he's, like, trying to express his ways in it. And for some reason, it just left me feeling just, like all kinds of way weird and it might just be because i'm so used to hearing him yell and it means that there's jokes going on but actually hearing him yelling when there's no jokes going on and it's like a complete opposite effect of like oh my god this is terrible and i think it's actually a a, a, a bonus point for uh, shimpachi's voice actor to be able to be like it, it can't be hard it can't be easy to be like oh yeah your character is known for shouting during goofy times but then to also be able to do that same shout and still be able to deliver emotional lines is something to be commended for <laughs> and i did not expect that to be something that would be able to be done but he is able to do it perfectly uh that bit where they're at the front of the bar and they're getting ready to leave uh also hit really hard because i've also been in another situation where you had to say goodbye to the hope that you've known and that bit where shinpachi's thinking back about like when he's ready to say like okay it's time to, we can still start over and then like all it all hits you at once when you're when you realize this place that has been our home for so long it's not going to be our home anymore and he just like hits up and he's like i'm i'm sorry i actually i can't do it like he wants to be positive but he just there's just too much built into this house the way that they've built it up for them that he just can't bring any of it to it really done really well emotional one i was basically like emotionally stunted throughout this entire episode <laughs> and up until the end uh it was actually very thankful for gintoki to talk to make that guts joke because that almost like snapped me back into it and i was <laughs> good to go when he like uh hit him in the guts he's like i'm here to make you spill your guts that was enough to kind of bring me back i'm like okay all right, we're good. Okay, they're they're gonna fix it. He better fix it in some way. Um, I really like the bit where they start talking about Parako starts talking about her dad, 
and specifically the parallels that he shares with Gintoki, which is something that they'll go into in the other upcoming episodes, but this is like the kind of start to like mention it. But even in the backstory, you can see some of the similarities between his backstory and Atose's back and um, between Atose and Gintoki's relationship and the same similar for Jiracho's and Atose's and the idea that they're both kind of by most, they, they would be people that would be written off by most people, but Atose still believed in them. Um, and still believes in them, even though when most people would have given up, and that's like kind of a running theme uh, of, about them is that they share a lot of similarities in that kind of uh, regard. Uh, and they kind of get into it in a little bit more in some future episode. I'll save that for now. But I did like them starting to talk about that specifically, and also the mentioning of like Kentucky, someone who has uh, um, accepted it, whereas uh, Jiracho is someone who has rejected it. Uh, I also really like, I think, I don't remember if this is the one where they mention it, but I think, uh, because it might be even this episode or the next episode, but Parako remembers something about her dad, and then they talk about, like, when Parako's mom was dying, she was able to smile still about her dad, she's like, why can you still smile about my dad, why can you still accept him, and then she kind of goes, um... It's because your father said that he would one day return. I don't think you've noticed he's never returned back from the war. Like, he said that he would come back from the war one day, but because of the specific thing that we, sh we are shown here today, where he was on the battlefield and he watched his friend died, his wife is understanding it, and she's like, I don't, I don't think a lot of people notice this, but he's never come back. He's never been able to come back. He said he would come back, but the specific man that left us to go to war, he's still fighting that war. His war's not done yet. Um, and I can't remember if it's this episode or the next one, but because a lot of them kind of run into some of it, it might be in the next one, but I really like, at least here, you can see a little bit of the war part of him being kind of stuck still fighting something that uh, comes from it. Uh, and then I also like that a lot of the characters from old episodes come back, because <laughs> just to show how serious shits are, shit is after Atose's been got, um... Some of these characters we have not seen in so many episodes, but I think actually, legitimately, the character we have not seen the most is the strawberry milk that Guntoki drinks. Uh huh. And he like tosses the carton. <laughs> yes, he good. is pretty good. I was like, damn, there really is, dude. They're going back for so many things to talk about this, and it's uh, it's amazing. It's really good. And of course, that ending bit there where he talks about like, yeah, the Atose family's here to pay their respects. Really good. And also when they all get together and they take a dumpling and they make a new promise to Atose's husband before they go off is really, really nice and really well done. And I liked it a whole bunch. I thought this episode was amazing. How do you feel, Zen? Yeah, top quality stuff. Banger episode. This is the Gintama arcs kind of follow the structure of like, oh no, everything's lost. Oh wait, the heroes are gonna kick ass. Mm. Uh, so it, this was a good one to like build you back up after what happened to Atose in the last episode. Uh, when they're all like, when when Gintoki is alone in the bar, it's such a cool like, oh yeah, he's about to fuck people up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he really is just. It's so easy to like him as your mate, as your MC man. He really is <laughs> just that different kind of a guy. <laughs> That's probably why the it hurts it hits so much when both Catherine and Shinpachi are yelling at him because it's like that's uh, no no Shinpachi says this the quote here when he's talking when he's yelling at him. Who are you? Are you not Gintoki? <laughs> are you not? <laughs> are you? Excuse me. Are you not him? Answer me. And then he answers him, and he goes like, yeah, I, I, am, I am him, so let's go fucking do this. It's really good. Oh, god damn, this series is so fucking good. Uh, anything else to say before we move on, Zen? Nope, nope, nope. Let's continue on, then. Uh, episode 213, Iron Town. So, we're all outside, uh... And Gintoki just starts beating the shit out of everybody. Uh, the maid, Tama, is, like, shooting fire out of her broom. And she's like, I'm commencing uh, trash removal procedure. I'm going to take all the garbage out of the Kabuki <laughs> district right now. Um, Kagura is slamming, like, power lines on people. And Shimpachi is protecting her from people trying to attack her. 
Um, and so Saigo and Paraka are like, all right, our guys clearly can't do this, so we're going to step in and, and do it. Um, and then Gintoki goes to fight him. He's like, oh, are you sure you want to jump in and fight us? Because your, your house and the bar is on fire. Uh, and you, don't have an, you either don't have enough people to stop the fire or fight us at the same time. And then uh, the firefighter appears and puts out the flames. The blacksmith from uh, Benny Zakura, Benny Zakura the girl, shows up. We can never Ted. escape Benny Zakura. Never. Um, and then my years. favorite uh, reveal is the <laughs> hard-boiled detective. He's back! He shows up and he's like, yeah, a, man, a real man has to be hard-boiled. <laughs> um, then the robot man shows up, the guy who makes all the robots. Gendai. Um, and he's also with Hasegawa in a in a cardboard <laughs> robot suit. He's in the, the, the meme cardboard Gundam outfit. Yeah. And he's like and then it's funny because everyone's like, You guys, you're here and then Hasegawa shows up and they're like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why am I the only one that didn't get an excited reaction? Um And then the male escorts arrive to help as well, and then so does uh Otai and all the cabaret girls. Uh, and they've all decided that, you know, these these guys have helped us out in the past, and we're going to help them out now, and we're not going to let you uh, destroy this bar. And then the the girl, Paraka, is like, you know, we don't need to worry about them. They're, they're nobodies. They're amateurs. And then Otai, like, destroys a bunch of people, and she's like, clearly you don't know who I am. I am the <laughs> queen. Uh, and then they all start, like, beating the shit out of their forces. Um, and so Gintoki's like, it's about time that you you two give up. Atose won this battle. And they refuse to stand down, and so they go to fight Gintoki, but then Kagura and Shinpachi step up. Um, and we're like, yeah, oh, okay, you're going to let these kids die? That seems pretty cruel of you. Uh, and he's like, I, he says something like, uh, I don't know if I can forgive you for sending these two kids out here to get killed. And Gintoki's response is like, whatever. Better not to be forgiven by you than to not be forgiven by them. <laughs> uh, and so then it looks like they get beaten easily, but then it's revealed that all they did was take one hit before they end up one-shotting uh, Saigo and Parako. Uh, Kagura knocking him out with a punch, and then Shinpachi uses the back end of the sword that Gintoki gave him to knock out Parako. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> and it's revealed at some point during this battle that Catherine has been running toward the place to use her thief skills to rescue Saigo's kid. Um, eventually, they do give up because they can't. They can't win. They're all taken out. And then it, the the fucking peacock woman Kata Can, uh, Kata yeah. is talking to Jirocho, and Jirocho's like, actually, um, I came here to kill you, basically, because I know that you've been pulling the strings this whole time, and you've been doing a bunch of shit to make us all fight each other so that you could take over the town. And while he's like explaining it. Um, all of her assassins start showing up, and they try to kill uh, Piraco, but Saigo uh, blocks him and saves him. And then uh, they tell uh, Gintoki and them to go help Catherine while they stay here and deal with the rest. Uh, it's revealed that she is part of the Harusame, the, the pirates that keep showing up. Mm-hmm. Um, and she has, like, these elite warriors with her, and they're going to take the town over and all this stuff. Um, but then he's like, oh, don't you worry. We're going we're gonna to win this. Uh, the old man says that to her, and then we cut back to the group, and the group is like, I don't know what we're going to... I don't know what we're going to do. Like, we can't win this. You know, where there's too many assassins here. And then Atose shows up, and she's on the roof, and she's like, wow, are you all giving up already? And she gives him, like, a very Atose-esque pep talk. Uh, and that revitalizes everybody. A couple of assassins go to kill her quickly, and they get taken out by the guy that Gintoki saved and had charged with uh, guarding her because he always pays his debts back, seven to three. Mm -hmm. That's the way he parts his hair, I think. Yes. <laughs> <It's a joke. laughs> it um, is. And so the, the two of them appearing and fighting kind of revitalize everybody else, and they start pushing back. Um... And then we see that the group there with uh, Kata and Jirocho and all of the assassins or whatever, um, Gintoki and them kick the door in. 
And then Gintoki's like, all right, you and Kagura go find Catherine and help save the kid. I'm going to stay here and deal with this. And then Gintoki and Jirocho are like, they just start laughing at each other, basically, because they challenge each other to a fight. But there's all the other shit going on in there. And so they start laughing, and she uh, she tells them to go kill both of them, and they start, like, fucking up all of her bodyguards, basically. Mm-hmm. It's a, with a really well-done sequence of both of them looking at each other, laughing, and then she goes, What are you doing? Stop laughing! And then they immediately fuck up a whole bunch of them as they both go and stand posed back-to-back. <laughs> really well done. Um... Yes, okay, I can confirm. This is the episode where uh, Paraco talks about um, her father never coming back from the war. Uh, that's the one where he comes from. There's also something I have to mention to Paraco because I actually really think it's a funny point of mention. So, uh, two episodes back, her ponytail was cut off by Jiracho. And since then, the next scene that you see her in, she glues it back on. And if you pay attention throughout the entire arc, the ponytail moves every single bit as the glue kind of puts its hair all the way forward. <laughs> it's really funny. It, 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 it changes places almost every single time because it's glued on and it's not actually there. <laughs> Which is funny. I thought it was a funny point of detail. Uh, the episode, really good. I love it whenever there's a story of this is a shit place, but it's our shit place. <laughs> I think it's great. Um, everyone coming back. Some of these characters, like I said, have not appeared for us in close to over 100 episodes. Hard Boiled, we have not seen since episode 85. It has been, <laughs> we are on episode 213. Yeah, he, he also was only in like, two episodes he that is correct that one little arc of him and the the phantom fox thief or whatever yeah and that was enough for me but when he showed up and went it's hard boiled yeah he he was like a, a lot of the other ones was like oh that's neat and then the hard boiled detective guy showed up and i was like fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of that's, that's what's the good thing about these moments it has a lot of characters where it's like depending on the person they're gonna go oh yeah it's them but then sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll show that one guy who was there for a single arc and you'll go yeah fuck yeah he's back <laughs> let's go <laughs> yeah it was but it was really nice to see everyone else tetsuko uh talks to me the fire gen guy who also shows up it's also really funny because whenever gen guy shows up he always it's hard it's easy to forget but he actually just has an army of fucking robots with him yeah because they're all like oh well they're just like cabaret girls what are they gonna do and then the robot dude has a literal army like shooting cannons yeah it was also really funny to see hasagawa with him too which leads up to a really funny moment in later on <laughs> which continues yeah, on the final final credits yeah, yeah which is really funny <laughs> that bit there but i really liked him showing up and he being the only one where they're just like uh hasagawa and he's like what <laughs> it's also funny because he's the only one who's actually just a reoccurring character by himself <laughs> besides otai um i really liked a lot of the fighting going back like i think i'm trying to think of who might actually be the one who hasn't been appearing in the most and it might actually be the hostess dude i want to say hostess dude hasn't been featured in so many episodes i'm trying to remember the last one it might it, it looks like it might have been the 50s like 54 <laughs> was the last time we see him, including the guy with the giant afro. It has been that long. And they all get their moments. Uh, they all have a fun time uh, fighting back against them. And then I like it at the end when it seems clear which one of the four dev devas was actually the evil one all along. And it's time for them all to go together. They were trying to make them fight within themselves and beat themselves up. The dude who is the... who was killed... who was uh, thrown away at the beginning... And saved in Kentucky is the one who's able to kind of get his dudes back on, on the field. And he even says to Paraco when he goes there, he's like, uh, Paraco, listen, I will literally give my life. I don't care what you did to me, basically. Like, just basically saying, like, I don't care what you did. As long as it's to the service of making our guy, our boss better, that's all that matters to me. Because he was the only one that ever gave us a home when no one else would. Um... That's all that matters. But right now, we have to save this place because this place is the place that he gave up everything to try and save. Uh, which is true, as you hear later on when he's talking to um, uh, Kade, Kada, he says, like, basically, the reason that I started doing more underhanded things is that he realized that he had to do that in order to stop the Amanto from actually taking over the district. 
which is what Kata has been wanting to do all these years and has been trying to do. They were, she was trying to be the uh, similar to the red light district that was there. She was trying to do the exact thing same thing to uh, to them so he was trying to prevent it the best he could and that's why he ended up going down the path that he took um, and why he was still fighting that's why uh, Paraco's mom noticed that whatever he's fighting he's still fighting the Amanto he's still fighting the war he's not stopping anything he's still going um, really cool and yeah that moment where they're going to go fight each other is also really well done um, as they just go both kind of look at each other and just laugh <laughs> and go for it. And then they start fighting together, it, the fighting together, but also fighting against each other at the exact same time. <laughs> really cool. Yep. It was a really good episode and I liked it. How do you feel Zen? Yeah, no banger the whole time. The whole thing was good. Mm -hmm. Uh, the bit at the end was crazy when they just start fighting all the guards together. It, oh uh, man, it's fire. 100%. 100%. Now let's bring it home with the final episode for this arc, even though the next one is an aftermath. But in terms of this arc, it's finished here. Episode 214, Tis an Honor. Go ahead, Zen. So, uh, Toste and everyone, uh, you know, inspires everyone, and they start beating up the, uh, the elites that came from Kata. Uh, as they're standing there, Saigo gets a phone call uh, because Catherine, Shimpachi, and Kagura rescue him as the Kabuki cats. They're all in like leotards dressed <laughs> as cats. And he like slams the door on them, but eventually they get him to come out. That slam um, on the door of face when Catherine first tries to do that bit to him, and she's like, wait, 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 no, go back. <laughs> I can. <laughs> yeah. It's really good. And then, yeah, because then Shimpachi and uh, Kagura are like, you scared him because you look creepy in that weird <laughs> outfit. And then it zooms out, and they're in the cat section. onesies. Yeah. Really good. Um, so, yeah, eventually they they do get him, and when they reveal that um, his son is safe, Saigo's like, oh, I don't have to hold back anymore, and he starts kicking ass. Uh, and so everyone kind of bands together and starts fighting Kata's people. Uh, Gintoki and Jirocho are destroying these bodyguards, uh, but slowly they start getting whittled down little by little as each one kind of lands like a cut here or there uh, as they're getting killed. Eventually they do take everybody out, but they're they're both pretty wounded. So Kata just kind of leaves, and uh, Gintoki and Jirocho both like fall out for a bit, and they're not able to chase her. Uh, and then they kind of stand up and they have a little bonding moment where they're talking about like, what's uh, like what what are you here for? What's your promise? And they kind of share their memories of Tatsugoro a little bit. Um, and he's like, how how did you get his his uh, jute thing? And he's like, ah, I made a one sided promise and then I stole it. And then it cuts back to Jirocho and he's like, I did the exact same thing when I made him a promise when he died and then I took his pipe. So he reveals that the pipe that he's been smoking is Tatsugoro's. Um, he kind of has blamed himself for his death and so that he thought that he would protect the Kabuki district the way that, you know, like the best that he could by basically taking it over and, and ruling it so that no one could do anything bad in it. Um, both of them decide that they have no intention of breaking their promises and they need to settle it so they go to attack each other uh they toss the jute and the pipe up in the air as like a signal to when they can start and then they draw on each other and gintoki shatters uh jirocho's sword and also cuts the pipe in half and uh catches the jute and he tells him to give up smoking because it's not good for him because they have a little talk and he's like why didn't you kill me and then Gintoki's like, I promised him that I would protect everything that he loves, and that includes you, so I'm not going to kill you. Um, then we cut to Otose and Jirocho, and they're in the same hospital room, also with Saigo. They're all like in the same room together. And they're kind of bickering, and then they have like a heart-to-heart -heart moment. And then uh, right as they start to get like emotional, everyone falls through the door because they've been recording it and like taking photos with their phones and shit. <laughs> um, Tama, a, a disengaged recording mode. <laughs> yeah, her eyes are like bright red and she's recording. Uh, it ends up turning into like a party that they all have together. 
and uh, Atosi's like, you know, you don't need to protect this town anymore because Gintoki and the other, like, we're all here, and you can go and take care of the things that matter in life. Like, go be with your daughter, basically. Um, and then Kata appears with some more assassins, and she's like, I'm going to kill them right now and, and finish this. But then Pirako attacks them, and she thinks that she'll sacrifice herself to stop them. But then Gintoki and Kagura and Shimpachi appear to help her. And so Kata runs away again. Uh, and then Gintoki uh, gives her a note. And he's like, I'm not healthy enough to, to give you what you deserve right now. So you meet me there at this date when I'm healed. And then I'll deal with you. Because she's expecting him to like kick the shit out of her, basically. Uh, she does show up on the day. And there's another person in the field. And then... Um, he kind of starts telling her his story, and he's like, "I, you know, I was a kid raised in a shitty town of, among shitty people, and um, I want to go on a journey and pick up the things that I've left behind." And then he says that I'm the father of Chin Piraco, and then Piraco starts crying and kind of meets him with a, an equivalent introduction, and she says that she's the newest and the lowest ranking member of the uh, Odd Jobs family, and that she's on a journey to uh, find her father. And she's the daughter of uh, Jirocho. And he says, oh, you know, this meeting must have been fate. Can I accompany you on your, your journey? To, like, can I come with you from now on? And uh, they have a very touching moment. And then we kind of see what everyone else is, is going on, like what they're doing as well. Uh, and that's when the really funny moment happens where Hasegawa is being turned into an actual gun. <laughs> yeah, it's the funniest shot. It's just like a one shot of quickly showing uh, him as being worked on as a Gundam, but like half made, so his arm and leg are missing. <laughs> Ooh, real good. Yeah, but in set two, unfortunately, the last time that we'll be hearing Samurai Heart for the anime. Man, I've been screaming that song all day. Samurai! It's really good. I think it's uh, officially time for me to realize an hour in. Thank you to so our new intro, which is I found a 16-bit a version of Samurai Heart that will now be the intro to the Gintama portion. Oh, it's really good. And this ending bit was also fantastic. Um... Let's get right into it. I will say, just for this specific ending, as we talk about the ending of the arc, um, I really like the way that it circles back. Because when Paraco first shows up, she also does this introduction thing, which I don't know what it is, and it makes me think that it's some kind of maybe kabuki thing. The only reason I say that is because when I was playing Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, uh... Uh, Ichiban does the same thing when he's telling his story. He puts his hand out like this, which nobody can see me fucking do it, but <laughs> the way that she puts her hand out is the same way that he does it, so it makes me feel like it's some kind of way of telling your story. Um, if you know a little bit more about that, please let me know, because I would like to know what that is, but I realize, like, I've now seen this, like, three times because it starts at the beginning of this arc, it's here at the end of it, and it was in Like a Dragon, so I would kind of like to know Isn't a little bit more. A kabuki theater pose that looks like that. Yeah, that's what like I'm the thinking. One hand back and the one hand out. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's a kabuki I think thing. Gilgamesh from Final Fantasy does that pose too, and he's like a kabuki painted guy. It must be a kabuki thing then. The with the presentation must be something about that. That would make a lot of sense to me. I meant to look it up, but then I forgot. <laughs> but feel free to tell you. I'm almost positive it is a kabuki thing though, like a way of expressing the story, especially with the way that they're kind of telling their story and doing all that. Uh, I really like this. It was a really good touching moment when he like actually removes it and he is able to go back to being the dude that he was before all this kind of started and he's finally home from the war. And it's oh, it's such a good moment, especially when she does the same intro back and she's like, "I'm I'm the newest member of the Odd Jobs family." Oh, it was so good. And then they just it's hug. So good, man. Uh, they hug it out in the flowers that they talk about. Because the thing that Paraka wanted the most is that she was told by her uncle that Gerard, uh, he was like a flower that bloomed. And the flower hasn't bloomed in a long time. And so that's why she was looking for Gintoki. Because she heard that 
the only it would take the strongest person in the district to make his flower bloom again and then it actually legitimately does happen <laughs> and he is able to return to the way he was really well done and then there's a really nice shot as they're like um hugging it out in the flowers they cut to the flowers and then we see that three of the flowers have been used uh, to put as, like, a little memorial to, um, Tatsugoro's, uh, like, little funeral, uh, place thing, and he puts them there, and it's really well done, uh, it's really nice, very, well, very, very beautiful way of kind of ending the entire arc and making it come back on a field way good note. They do a really good fucking job of introducing, um these characters and making them like like you you care about them in such a short amount of time <laughs> Jirocho goes from i can't wait to see gintoki fucking kill this guy and then by the end of it i'm like i'm so glad that he's finally back from the war <laughs> it's a crazy twist and it might just be because of how much uh he is kind of like gintoki and that they kind of talk about it here about how they're both very similar in a lot of ways down to the thing that was chaining them down wasn't Atose. It was actually the promise that they made to Atose's husband. Um, and I also like that when he's talking about like his specific interactions with everything um, related to the husband. Like, yeah, I took the pipe, and now every time I smoke the pipe, like it reminds me of him. And that's the thing that's actually weighing him down, that he's not able to move on. And Gintoki realizes that, and I like when he actually destroys it. He says, you need to give up smoking, old man. It's bad for your health. Uh -huh. <laughs> really well done. Really nice. Uh, that bit when they're in the hospital is also really fun. Because when Natose is talking to him, and for a brief bit, she's able to turn back to... I like that Natose has the power that when her, if her words hit just right, she returns back to her young form. <laughs> Yeah, again, like Genkai. Yeah, exactly, like Genkai. Power, she, young. <laughs> she turns young again. And it's like, it's a really nice moment. And then they all burst through the door. And then the fucking psycho goes like, you assholes, it was just getting good. Because <laughs> he, he was sleeping the entire time. I was actually wondering, like, is he actually not going to be, is he asleep through all this? And then he reveals he was awake the entire time. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's really good. The bit about everyone recording is also real well done, especially because the Jirocho's a main dude was brought a fucking camera. Uh, Otai was was recording on her phone, and then Tama was just recording inside of herself. <laughs> really fucking good. And the way that they all party down, and they're all having a fun party inside is also really good. Um... Oh man, there's just so much good good shit going on here. The fight obviously is amazing when they're like getting fucked up progressively throughout the fight and they're still just kind of keep going. And to the point where <laughs> it's really good cuz uh Kata goes like, "Okay, now ha ha ha, now I laugh, you're done." And then they fucking kill her last two dudes and she's like, "I give up, man. <laughs> this yeah, is just just leaves." <laughs> just leaves. <laughs> They're just both like, ah, damn it. Oh, we can't keep going. And then Jirocho hits him with, like, god damn, this new generation. Back in my day, I would have been able to stop her. It's like, yeah, whatever, old man, shut up. Um, Yeah, I really liked it. I really liked the kind of dynamic that they had going on here about the two... That both Jirocho and Gintoki are so similar in a lot of things they do. They both made the same promise. They both had the same kind of, like samurai spirit to them of kind of like being able to get shit done what with jirocho kind of growing up to be like yeah i was the vigilante of the group kind of probably i would say probably back in the day he would probably be something very similar to how kintoki would help people but he's not a part of the shinsengumi where in the shinsengumi are like the actual law side of it but they can't help everyone and that's where you use someone like uh gintoki to kind of help the people who don't actually get helped by the shinsengumi and Jirocho was probably filling a very similar role where he was helping out with a whole bunch of them. But then the war broke out and then everything just turned to shit as everything went bad. Um, and yeah, that final confrontation was really good when he uh, when he broke them down. Cause especially because it looked like it was going to be a, a... They kind of frame it as like, oh no, this is going to be to the death. But it ended up being whoever could break the other's chains first, actually. And then he finally, like, lets it go. And I think they say here he retires now. He's no longer one of the four devas, and 
Obviously, the other one is missing in action for the time being. But yeah. he is finally... Uh, to... runs off. Yep, yep. She runs off, and we see what happens to her next episode. But really good. Uh, really well done. I think I could literally go on about how good everything is forever. So I'm just going to say, Zen, what did you like about it? Uh, everything. All of it. <sighs> Yes. It, was, it was pretty perfect from start to finish. Uh, again, yeah. the fights are shining a lot more with, mm. the, with the updated visuals. It's really, really nice. Mm. Uh, the fight between all the guards and Gintoki and Jurocho was so cool. Um, whole thing banged, man. The credits were awesome. Oh, yeah, I'm going to miss this credit song. I'm going to oh, miss it so much. I'm going to miss you so much. One one of the it might actually be my favorite. There's so many good EDs for Gintama, but this one now, 100%, my favorite. <laughs> Uh, I've also been told the Spire does come back later on, and I will gladly hear more of them, because they do such a fucking banger job with this one. Yeah, I think they have, I looked it up, and they have like five or six songs in Gintama. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Looking forward to yes, more. this is a total banger. 100%. Um, perfect arc. I, I loved every second of it. I, by the end of it, I was like, you know what? At this point, I'm just going to make the pitch doc to uh, the Yakuza team myself. Literally just take this fucking arc, adapt it in some kind of way, because it's literally perfect for everything. You have all the characters built up to you that are like, what would be the best way to stop it? This is literally the best way you could end it. Is just have this specific segment, have a game that is focused on leading up to this fight. You can have Benny Zakra, you can have some of the other stuff in there, but then you can end it on here, and if you want to just do the thing where it's like, okay, maybe it's slightly different from the actual thing and we can't fully adapt everything, that still works too, because of all the characters that come back to help for this, you can do the same thing there, and you can have it all, everyone come back, oh, come on, man, it's so cool, <laughs> just give me a real game! Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen failed yeah. so that this vision of a real-ass video game could one day come true. Please, for God's sake, a real game. <sighs> just one. Just one. It'd be so good. This one just feels so built for it, like, with so much of the stuff that is, like, harkening back to, like, some of the earlier stuff that was, like, kind of talked about in a little bit at the beginning. So it's the perfect way to actually have, like, your cake and eat it, too. You can have all the fun things about Gintama that are, like, the silly things, and then you can end it off on this, which is just a fucking banger way of going out, I would say. And yeah, man, just really good. Now we're going to get to this next part because I need to be talking about how do you feel about this arc in general? We do this for every arc, but I feel like if we don't stop talking about this episode, we're just going to continue on. So let's just go yeah. transition it into uh, how do you feel about the arc in, in general? Really good. Even the setup episode was pretty good. It was definitely the weakest one, like they always are. Yeah. But uh, even though I think my favorite one was probably still the one where I thought Atose died. That one got the strongest, like, mm. emotional pop out of me um but i think they were all really good uh, two and four were my favorites for sure yeah yeah for sure for sure and yeah I, I i feel the same way it was uh some perfect stuff going down the only thing that i would ever <laughs> talk about is that definitely some of the 2011 phrasing of some of the characters got a little bit weird yeah we yeah. we have to bring it it's the only negative and it only exists because this was translated during 2011 if you retranslated it today they would use a different word <laughs> they would use a yeah, better uh, they say they say uh, the, the t word a lot i guess you could say to the point um, it, it gets to the point where it's like some of it is like okay it, it's a little bit excessive i think like they, yeah, they I, use it a lot yeah, it a lot. and I don't yeah. feel like it's a it's a, it, the way that I, the reason I feel like it's not that bad, bad of a build, build deal breaker is because they are the good guys. They're being tricked, and when they, it's time yeah. for them to actually like get done, they say no. These dudes are as important to this district as anyone else. We accept them and love them, and that's why I feel like God what damn I don't it. Get is I thought that they were cross dressers, or are they just being derogatory? That's the thing in Japan. It's a little bit. Uh, the, to them Not it's all the it's dry. all the yeah it's to them it's all the same as far as i'm concerned please don't come at me for this <laughs> i don't know enough about japan but that is what my understanding is is that as far as the word is goes it kind of just means all the same thing that's why i feel like oh. when you're translating it it gets a little bit weird because they're like ah they're just probably calling them this or something um but probably if you were to look at it a little bit different that's why i feel like it comes off way harsher than it should because i feel like it shouldn't be coming off that harsh but at the same time they are just kind of like poking fun at them and you know for a fact that like 
well, they do this to everyone. And also, they are actually legitimately good characters that are loved within the air. So I don't feel like it's a case of just like, hey, fuck them. Because that's not true. Because they are actually really, really loved and they are as accepted as, as anyone else in the community. It's just like they just want to crack jokes at them and stuff like that. So I don't know. It's probably a little bit more complicated than both of us really have the time for. But I'll just say that if it's, I think it's literally just because this was translated in 2011. <laughs> That's the part where it's coming off a little bit harsher than it should. Because we're uh, 14 years later after the fact. <laughs> and things have changed. Is it 13 actually? Yeah, 2024 minus uh, 13 would be 2011. Yeah. But yeah, that's like literally the only thing. And I really do think it just comes down to like a translation thing of uh, of, of anything else. But other than that, fucking so good, man. It's really good. I, well, I'll give it some time to read, but it might actually probably be um, either first or second for me. Trying to think if I were. Yeah, wanna... I don't want to. I don't want to rank it yet. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't feel. It's. It's too. Brief, but, yeah, it's uh... too. It's too fresh to rank. That's why I want to give it a little bit more time. But it, the presentation of it definitely is just banger all the way through. One hundred percent, just so fucking good. Um, and now we still have to talk about Morgan Thomas then, because <laughs> that is not the end. There's an aftermath. Yeah, we have the one more episode. That's right. We have episode 215, Odds or Evens. It's time for the return of the OP Merchant <laughs> to make... Yes, o OP Merchant Takasugi is back. <laughs> all of them are back. Yeah, yeah, as ex soon as we started talking about how they were OP Merchants, they've all started appearing. Except so. for the king of them. Sakamoto, nowhere to be seen. Cashing them checks. <laughs> nowhere to be found. Go ahead, Zen. Yeah, so Kata was captured by the Harusame because it turns out that she had been uh, she had stolen money and tried to run away, so they captured her. Uh, she's fully crazy now, just in jail, like losing her mind, and she's playing odds and evens in the cell with two like screws. So obviously there isn't one. Mm -hmm. um, just to let you know, she's got screws loose. Yeah. <laughs> Kamui and Kamui's sidekick, whose name I don't remember, uh, visit her. <laughs> Yeah, and come uh, we plays her little game because she does the odds or evens and he loses I mean obviously she just says oh you lose but he loses um, and then the admiral is there talking to uh, Takasugi and he's like hey we need to get rid of uh, Kamui and all of their guys because um too dangerous to be to be kept around. So Takashi's like, all right, I'll you know orchestrate something, um, and we'll we'll trap them. And so the plan is kind of going off here, and the uh, Takasugi and Kamui are there, and they're like, oh, why don't we fight? And then the admiral's guys appear and shoot Kamui in the back, and then Takasugi um, slashes him, and they capture him, and he's in prison. And he's like, oh, you know, what What are we going to, like, how long am I going to be alive for? And they're like, we're going to execute you in three days or whatever. Um, he goes over to Kata, and he's like, all right, I'll play. And he he plays the game and loses as well. And then Kamui's like, she's cursed, by the way. Um, you're out of luck, and you lost the game, so now you're going to you're gonna die next. And I wonder which one of us is going to die first, blah, blah, blah. Um, at Kamui's execution, the admiral guy is like, ah, we gotta get this guy, but like, no one really likes him. He's like the president everybody hates. Yep. Um, and he's executing Kamui because Kamui's getting too popular, and you know, it's gonna, people are gonna turn on the admiral and go to. When they Kamui go to instead. when they when they go to vote for Kamui, it's just gonna be complete rush over. <laughs> yeah. Um. Takasugi is like, hey, why don't you uh, let me kill him? Because I didn't get to fight him, but I can I can kill him. And then they are like, all right, we're going to let him do it, and then we're going to jump him right after that and kill him too. Um, Takasugi swings the sword, but he actually cuts Kamui loose of the thing that he's in. And then uh, Takasugi and Kamui start fighting together to take out the troops. Then uh, the... Uh, Takasugi's gang, which is the Kiheitai, I think, yeah, um, appears and starts helping him. 
and then uh, the other Yato appear and start helping Kamui. And they're all, like, fighting in there, and then the other leader, like, the other leader's guys, like the Admiral's men, start turning on him because they just like Kamui and they like his group more. Uh, so the only one that is, like, on his side still is the cat man with the hook hand. Um, and then Kamui ends up killing them both, and so he takes over as the Admiral. And then him and Takasugi kind of team up, and they're like, hey, what do we do? Um, what do we do now? Are we going to the samurai planet? And he's like, yeah, we're going back there. But before they go, Takasugi goes and plays the the fake dice game with Kata one more time, uh, and he loses again. So he's he's destined still to to run out of luck. Hmm. And he just kind of smirks and leaves. Yeah, this is a uh, an interesting episode because it's setting up a lot of stuff. Uh, it was nice to see Takasuji back. <laughs> um, actually, legitimately having an episode, I actually really do think it's super funny that every single person that we made fun of for only appearing in OPs and EDs all appeared here except for two, and it, one of them is Sakamoto, and the other one is Sakamoto, the person who always hangs out with Sakamoto. <laughs> uh huh. Both of them stay cash and check. So if you're looking currently, the the counter is five episodes since last appearance. Actually, it's yeah, five episodes since last appearance for Sakamoto. Currently zero for Takatsuji. <laughs> so he's currently winning. Uh, yeah, I really like this episode. I thought it was a uh, a good kind of way to show some stuff that's moving on in the background, which is something that we have usually never been privy to. <laughs> Usually they don't end an arc and then just show you what other bad guys are doing things. Usually they end like usually when I ex- what I actually expected for like an aftermath one, I thought it was a way to be like, oh, it's just gonna be a funny episode that are just kind of like try and pick up the spirits after that and then that's it. Um, but no, it ended up being totally just like let's actually set up some future stuff that they're gonna have to deal with, and I kind of can't wait to see it kind of go down. Kamoi was pretty fun to see hang around, do stuff. Abuto is the name of the other guy that's there. I also really like the bit where it seems like the... Um, I think it was... Um, no, it's not. I'm trying to remember the... Uh, Matoko. She's, like, trying to take... Uh, she's, like, worried for Takatsuji. He's like, I don't know, it feels like a really weird situation going on here. And he starts talking like, hey, as long as, if you ever feel lost, always follow me. And she's like, oh, Takatsuji, yes. And then it reveals that it's fucking Hinpeda. Oh, it's, it's the and, terrible guy. It's the terrible guy, and he's actually complaining about pro- probably some law to protect children. He's like, we need to cut this yeah. down. Also, he he's dressed like Takatsuji, and he has a puppet that he's talking into <laughs> that is a Takatsuji puppet that opens its, like, Muppet mouth every time he talks. Yep, which is really good, and this also this also he also returns the most confusing bit in all of Gintama, which is I'm not a pedophile, I'm a I'm a feminist. I'm just a feminist. <laughs> the world's weirdest <laughs> gag in all. Yeah, of... it's it's not good. No, it's not. But I think the the idea is that this person is a, t- a shitty person, but for some reason the pure it might just be because of how often we've seen the Benny Zakura trailer that I've always thought it's the I'm not a pedophile, <laughs> I'm a feminist guy. He always shows up. Um... But yeah, he has that moment, and then they have, like, a flash. They try and have a flashback with Takatsuji, and he fucking replaces him in the flashback. And both Bonsai and Bat- Batoko take about is like, Stop fucking doing that! Stop trying to screw with our memories of Takatsuji! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then I also like, it's really funny because the other bit is that when things are looking like, kind of like it's going to go crazy and Takatsuji might be cornered, actually he comes out and says like, actually that's not what's happening. We're being used as bait to lure out Komoi because he's getting too big for his britches basically. He goes like, oh wait, really? And then he actually starts being like a real character (laughs) and explaining like, oh no, this is the reason why Takatsuji probably keeps him, because he has, like, some idea for, like, analysis of strategy. He's like, yeah, that's what's happening here is that the main dude here is terrified of losing his position and isn't actually interested in growing better. He wants to keep things the way they are, so he's defanging himself, basically. So he's taking out his best person to prevent himself from being replaced. And I also like the bit where Takatsuji was, like, talking to him. He's like... 
Yeah, it, se- it seems like you're actually losing a lot more by taking out Kamoi this way than, you know, letting him just be free and wild out there. But, you know, do you, I guess, if you want to live this way. Like, it's very clear that everyone is like, no, this guy is this Admiral, which they... I think his name is, like, Admiral Ass- Assoy, but they keep calling him, like, Admiral Asshole. Admiral Asshole, yeah. Which, which is really funny, because at one point, Takatsuji is about to call him Admiral Asshole, and he stops, and he does, like, the two-second, like, admiral <laughs> and then he does the right one which is really funny um and yeah i thought it was a it was a really a good episode just hanging out and i like the bit at the end where they talk about like ru- running the dice and he's running out of luck and takatsuji he knows that for whatever reason the path that he's going down is going to result in him dying but there's also a part of him that just also doesn't care and he's just yeah, going he's to not bothered by it He's just not bothered by it at all. He's like, okay, let's go. I'm just doing this, regardless of anything. I also like when Kamui calls himself Admiral Nincompoop. <laughs> That's right, the new... The, we're no longer yeah, he's being... He's the new Admiral. He's no longer Admiral Asshole now. Kamui's the Admiral now. <laughs> he's Admiral Nincompoop. Pretty good. What'd you like about it, Zen? Or what, how'd you feel about the episode, Zen? Uh, it was good. It, it was tough to compare yes. with the, the end of it. Um, but... It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty cool. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, Kamui and Takasuji are both cool. It's nice to see Takasuji in an episode. Yeah. Um. That's always good. It was. It was cool. Yeah. Cool stuff happened. Cool stuff happened. Cool stuff happening in G- in Gintama Land, and we're gonna continue on with the good times going on. So what are we gonna be talking about next week? Well, let's break it down now. Next week should be. Episodes 216, 217, 218, 219, and 220, uh, which will be just a regular, we're going back to basics, just five episodes. Likely all five of these are just going to be good old silly times. Who knows? I I actually do have an idea because I have a summary of them on me, but for (laughs) the sake of mystery, I don't look at them until after I've watched them, (laughs) just in case there's anything in there that's uh, good for me to know. And then after that, we'll be going back into the weird formats, because then after that will be episodes, uh, the week after that will be episodes 221 to 222 for the uh, Judgem arc, 223 to 224, which are two solo arcs, 225 to 226, which is the jail arc, which is another two episode arc, and ending with the, no, ending there. And then next week we will be doing, after that, will be a really tiny, um, another five-episode arc, which will feature the Sket Dance crossover, the Love Chorizo, no, it's not Chorizo, Chortis arc, <laughs> the Love Chorizo, that's the completely different, sorry, my inner, my inner Mexican peaked out there for a bit. <laughs> uh... We'll be, we do episode 28, 228 to 229, and then another two random episodes of 230 and 231. And then we'll be heading into the next uh, arc, which will be the Renault arc, which will be episodes 232 to 236. But as you can see here, the cutting up of stuff is about to get weird because we're about to enter a lot of arcs uh, for this. Um, for this. And there will be some other funky stuff that's going to happen near the end of here. Uh, because people have also been bringing up, I forgot, that there's a there's a good bit here where they just kind of disappear off the face of the earth for a bit. <laughs> so we'll get into that when it happens. <laughs> we'll talk about it when we go through it. But yeah, that's the current game plan looking like. Uh, excited for more Zen for next week? Always. Always, Always excited for more Gintama. We love, Thanks. yeah, we love, we love talking putting... about Gintama. I'm putting uh, Samurai Heart right back on after we get off this report. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, we we have a real good time talking about Kintama, which is really funny because uh, someone also brought up we like talking about Kintama to the point that even when we're talking about the two episode arcs, which are the the part A and part B, which are usually the ones that you dislike the most, we still like talking about them. <laughs> Uh-huh. That's just how good Bintama is, baby. Even when you say it's something that you dislike, you still end up liking some part of it. And yeah, uh, God, I can't, I, I can't imagine we're, we're, when we're finally going to be done. <laughs> we're, we're barreling closer and closer towards it as we start going for. Like I said, we're about to get into some funky parts where a lot of episodes are going to be combined together, um, and we'll be. Getting that much closer to 369. When we hit 269, it means we only have 100 episodes left to go. Crazy to think about. 
of course, then we have to then talk about the live action movies and the other second movies. So there's plenty of stuff for us to talk about. Don't worry about. It. And we have oh, some yeah. other Don't stuff worry about that. And some other stuff cooking as well as we get closer to the end of Gintama. We'll be sure to let it off with style and grace that is fitting for the series. But that is it for today, everyone. Um, let's talk about where you can find more of us. If you want more Zen stuff, you can go to Zen's channel, where he does Shonen and Chill. Anything fun happening over in Shonen Jump Land, Zen? Uh, we got another new series that looks okay. I forget what it's called. It's uh, a great start. Yeah. It looks all right, uh, but the most important thing is that Kagurabachi is firing on all cylinders still. The continuation of the new Genesis of the new, the new big one. We're gonna yes. we're cutting we're cutting the other two. <laughs> Just we don't the... need two other ones. We have the only one that matters, which is Kagurabachi. Exactly, a thousand years of Kagurabachi. <laughs> And if you want some more me stuff, you can always go to my channel where I will promise to upload some more stuff. I finally finished Infinite Wealth, so there's no reason for me not to be making more videos. <laughs> Though I did immediately go into Tekken 8, and man, what what a video game. What a, what an amazing one. I've been slowly learning it. Uh, played through that story mode. Was insane the entire way through. Um... Uh, and uh, did a uh, character ending in an arcade type of thing, and I watched Kuma get launched into space, and my brother saw that, and he's like, that seems great. I was like, yeah, that was pretty great. <laughs> so I'll figure out some actual stuff to upload <laughs> at some point. It's not my fault good games come out. It's just unfortunate that for the most part, uh, I'm not one of those dudes who records something where it's like, oh, yeah, I can't wait to show everyone this. I'm just more like, I'm playing this for myself, man. I want to do yeah, this. <laughs> yeah, I get that. You gotta experience it first before you let anybody else exactly in the new game. The most I'll ever do is usually for the the opening of something. Like when we did that Elden Ring thing, where I was just like, "Here's then I here's Elden Ring. Let's just go check show some shit out." And I got a horse, and you could actually see me going. Actually, Elden Ring might be one of the greatest of all time because the second <laughs> I got that horse, and we started fucking around in the open world and slapping things around, it completely changed everything. <laughs> it's maybe one of my favorite videos that we've uploaded, <laughs> just because once we get that horse, we do so much dumb shit in the short amount of time that we have with the horse. It's great. Um, oh man, you know what would be a good game to stream? Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, that would be really fun. That's a that's a good horse based silly game. Yeah, I think he's on he's on my list of some of the the best horses in video games because I made one right after uh, uh, Elden Ring after I beat Elden Ring talking about horses and I think I <laughs> I put most influential horse Epona from Zelda. I don't think I put it as one of the best horses because I don't think I think actually riding that horse kind of sucks. <laughs> but in terms of uh, influential horses, it's a top one for sure. But anyway, there will be more stuff on the channel, I swear. Um, I'll figure it out. Oh, Maybe I'll find a Hello Kitty game somewhere out there and put it out there into the world. You know me. Whatever random thing I'll find, I'll gladly upload and do whatever with. And yeah, that's the end of the show, everyone. If you made it this far, remember, if you want to support the show, you can always support it by literally just talking about it or even watching it. It's good enough for us. Leaving a like helps with algorithm stuff, but for the most part, as long as people are watching... And enjoying it, that's all I really care about. And that's all what Zen cares about as well, I believe. I choose to believe. <laughs> I speak for Zen on this one. He cares about it, okay? Just take my word for it. <laughs> and we'll be back next week for more stuff. Probably we'll get to... We'll, we'll get back to Koroko. We want to do the, the, right, the right by it. And we want to make sure that we have plenty of time to talk about it. And next week, I, it looks like I'm not going to have a lot of... the. Uh, my work is finally going to slow down, so that's going to give us all the time in the world to talk about um, Kuroko's basketball. And let me just say, Kuroko's also really good. Yeah, and it will likely have as long... Bangs a bit. Yeah, that also bangs, and that will likely be as long as this one. The, the, the crazy thing is that as we get to more banger arcs, the longer the episodes for Shoted Archive get. <laughs> yep, they get really long sometimes. They do, they do. I can't imagine what happens when we actually reach the end of Gintama. <laughs> gonna be i think i think i've already like slotted them out it's thank god that it's actually in a movie so that we know for a fact like hey it'll take about that long it will be its own dedicated thing that we can talk about the ending and stuff but anyway that's enough talking about the future that's the end of the video thank you very much everyone 
say goodbye, Zen. Peace. Peace out!